Good afternoon. I'm Peter Hoff from Holland. Thank you for listening to me. I have, uh, if you think about an iPod, which is very important in our daily life, what would happen if you didn't have it? Not so much. But if you think about what would happen if you don't have food, then really a lot happens. And about one billion of the six billion people on Earth at the present moment don't have enough food. They're hungry. And this can lead to very big problems. So I was thinking, as a grower, I'm from Holland, a tulip grower actually, I was thinking, is there a possibility that we can feed those people? So if you look at the world map, to what happened in the last 2,000 years, everything that's orange, red, and yellow was once covered by forest. All these areas were productive. But we cut those forests, and then we put sheep and goat on them, and afterwards nothing grew anymore. But what are we going to do actually with the 10 billion people that are coming in the next only 35 years? We will really have a huge problem to solve that. And of course, we face another problem. The other problem what we face is that we have a climate problem. Are there solutions for those problems? Well, if you think about what the climate problem actually is, it's just a matter of too many molecules of CO2 in the air. Suppose we unbind those molecules, then there's no problem. Do we have a machine for it? Yes. The machine is photosynthesis. It is able, a tree is able, to unbind two tons of carbon dioxide per acre. Our output is 8.4 billion tons. So if we plant two tons per acre multiplied by five billion, then we have solved the problem. So actually, the area that you see on this map gives us the possibility to solve the food problem, and it gives us the possibility to solve the climate problem. But now we have another problem. Can you plant in dry areas? Do things grow there? Because in the moment, nothing grows there. When you travel through these areas, you see lots of trees, not on one place, but all over the world in dry places, you see them. I made some pictures of them, and they prove us that once a tree is able to establish in a desert or in a dry place, it can grow there. So then what's the problem with that tree? If you look in deserts, there's a lot of rain, much more rain than we think. Many deserts have between six to 20 inches of rain. The problem in most of the deserts is not the quantity. The problem is that this water falls in a peak. So you have 51 weeks dry and only one week of rain. And then the problem is that a seed that's germinating during this week will die afterwards because it cannot survive the next 51 weeks. Deserts also have other sources of rain. They have condensation. The plants that you see in deserts are able to survive during the dry periods because they drink from the air. It's just condensation that you find in the morning on your car when it is a cold night. Plants use that. And it is a very easy way for them to survive. So we have actually rain in the desert. And we do have condensation in deserts. So that's how I came to think on, is there a way to solve the problem to plant those deserts? While looking at the problem, I actually also studied what is happening in Mother Nature. How does Mother Nature plant? Mother Nature plants a lot different than we do. Because when we plant, we buy a very big plant that immediately evaporates. And we dig a hole. But Mother Nature doesn't do that. Mother Nature starts with a seed. And the seed is brought to the soil, on top of the soil. And it's covered by the excrement of the bird or of the cow. So Mother Nature doesn't dig a hole also. It keeps the soil intact. Why is that? Because in the soil, there's a transport system of water. We call that capillary. And if you want to plant a desert, you have to keep that capillary intact. So I developed kind of an idea, a box, that would make water from the air, the condensation, and that would capture the water from the air, the rain, and then store that water in the box and give it to the plant. I did trials with a handmade box from 2003 to 2005, and it worked. But of course, it was in Holland, so it's not a very difficult place to grow. So, but I had the principles in my mind, 
and improve the box that I had to 25 boxes. And I went to the Sahara Desert, which is more or less the mother of all deserts. And I did four years of trials. And after four years, I had 88% of the trees alive. So, thank you. With the information that I collected over the years, I decided, okay, now I'm going to invest in a box that we can make through an industrialized way, through mold, molding, injection molding. And I call this the Grace's Water Box. It is a box with a double opening. Why double opening? Suppose you want to plant a million acres and 12% fails, then you still lose 120,000 acres. So in this box that you actually put on top of the soil, which means that you copy Mother Nature, we plant two seeds or two small trees. You nail the box on the soil, and then those two seeds will receive water from the box. The box itself functions like the excrement, so it prevents the evaporation of the capillary. And the cover of this box is a copy of the lotus leaf, which means that water hardly attaches to it. If you put a microscope, you see small pyramids that lower down the adhesion of the water to the surface. The condensation and the rain is captured by this box and enters into these two holes. And then you create kind of a water battery, which means that if you have a rain shower in a desert of only one day and only four inches, then this box is full of water. On the bottom of the box is a dripper. And the dripper gives the water that you've captured every day to the plants that are planted in the center. So one rain shower of four inches is enough to give this plant or the seed a whole year water. And after that year, the plant is established. Of course, there are more questions. How is it actually possible that a tree is able to grow in a rock? This is a tree that I took a photo from between Reno and Sacramento. It's growing on a rock and 50 miles further away, in Napa Valley, they grow wine plants in fertile soil and they need 200 gallons per year. Why is it possible that nature is able to plant on a rock and the rock grows very good? and if the irrigation stops, all the wine plants die. So I started to study more than just the planting, but what happens after planting? And I found that after planting, nature makes a very different root from the roots that we actually use when we plant. Nature makes what we call a radical root. And a radical root is able to make a pressure of 725 PSI, which means that it's able to break every rock. It also means that if you don't use this rock, this kind of radical root, it is very difficult for us to replant deserts or eroded areas. So I started to study the roots that we plant, actually. And when you look at these pictures, you see that the root that we have in common plants, 99.9% .9 of all the plants in the world, then you see a destroyed radical root and you see what we call fantastic secondary roots. But those secondary roots are not able to penetrate in rock. So we have actually to develop a different kind of root that is able to penetrate the soils if we really want to replant those dry areas or if you just want to plant in your dry garden. Here you see an example of the trees that we plant. After a few years, there's not a radical root to be seen. So those trees only grow superficial, and as soon as it is dry, they will die. Now, I have done tests with a company in Holland to try to develop a different kind of root. And on the left, you see the wrong root, beautiful secondary roots, but not able to penetrate. And on the right, you see the modern type of root that we have to develop in the future. Those are pen roots that are not splitted and they are ready to go into any soil that you have where you want to plant on. And that's actually the answer of nature to grow into rocks. This is a tree which grows in Extremadura, Extrema Dura in Spain. And it grows on rocks that we cannot even lift with a forklift. Of course, there's another problem. If you want to plant on rocks and your rocks are not, uh, let's say, horizontal, then you will have a problem with this box because the box needs to be planted horizontal. 
on a slope, it's difficult to plant a tree. So I also started to find a way, how can I make a planting place for this box? At the moment, people in Morocco try to do some reforestation projects. And on average, they make one to two planting holes per person per day. So if you plant so slowly, we will never recover the eroded areas on Earth. So we have to find a solution for that. And At the moment, I am experimenting with this drill. Uh, the whole summer we've planted in Spain. And at the moment, the drill is in Morocco, where we plant uh, two and a half acres of Argana trees. It's a tree which makes a very special kind of oil with a value of $35 per liter. And they are planting now purely on rocks. And nature shows that this tree is able to grow on rocks. And with this drill, we found a way to plant it on rocks. <coughs> this year, I'm doing about 30 experiments worldwide all over the world in California. Uh, I just come from the Palm Springs area. Uh, we do them in... Uh... Oh, it goes quicker. So I wrote a book about how can we uh, solve the problems that we actually have at this moment in the world. We have seven world problems. I think you can read faster than I can tell them. And actually, if we think about it, all those seven world problems, we can solve them by planting trees or bushes producing food. Those trees will help us solving or at least attacking most of those problems in a way so that we can feed the 10 billion people coming in the next two generations, solve our climate problem, migration problems, create jobs. I think it is something that we have to do, and as soon as possible. I want to talk a little bit about my country. You, saw, you see that I took my wooden shoes with me. We make them from trees, so not by coincidence. My country has 100,000 miles of kennels. We made them over the last 2,000 years, all by hand. 
We have 8,000 miles of dikes. That's twice the length of the Chinese wall made by hand. We did it because we wanted to do it. Our rivers float above the land level because we live on the sea bottom. 55% of our land is made by hand and it's made out of the sea. And we did it with green energy. Don't believe people who say green energy has no future. We created a whole country with it. Can you imagine that 55% of your country was in the Pacific Ocean? We did it. So if you want to do it, you can do it. All you see in this country is made based on a free will. But it is also based on determination. We really wanted to do it. So I think if we really want to replant the 2 billion hectares of land, we can do it. The only thing where it depends from is our own will. I say even, if the area was small enough to cut, then it is certainly small enough to replant it. So I have a question to you. We have the target, we have the tools, and if we have the determined will to do it, then why don't we do it? Let's go for it. So my question to you is, who is going to help me? Thank you.